Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope that you're all staying safe and are um, managing the work that we've been setting. Um, thank you very much for the work that's been submitted so far. Um, it's great to be able to see how you're getting on. And I know all of your class teachers are enjoying looking at the work and actually providing you with feedback. So please do continue to do that. Um, over the next few lessons, we're going to be looking at some creative writing skills. This is for English language paper one, section B. And today in particular, we're going to look at assessment objective six for writing, which is the way that we vary sentence structures for effect. Uh, but it's also going to look at spelling, punctuation and grammatical accuracy. So the success criteria for the lesson there is on the board. We're looking at using accurate punctuation, but also varying our punctuation. So the idea today, we're going to look at uh, using full stops, commas and semicolons in particular. And we're going to try and look at how we can use that type of punctuation for particular effect. And then hopefully through building up complex sentence structures to use it with sophistication. So um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get going. As I've said, thank you very much for the work that you've submitted. If you can try to submit your work on Microsoft Teams, um, it's the best way for your teachers to be able to track what you've been send, uh, sending in. But also uh, it's, it's a nice way for us to um, also all use the same medium. If you can't use Microsoft Teams for whatever reason, please do continue to email your work to your class teacher. And if that's not working, please do email it to me and I will make sure it gets to the right place and you get some feedback. So in terms of the next few lessons, uh, obviously we're looking at English language paper one and we're going to look at developing a series of skills and strategies to really help you with your writing. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at one of those skills uh, and strategies, which is the flower box. Um, and over the next few lessons, we're going to look at please pass and the descriptive style. And the important part about the lesson is that you're going to have a go to actually do your own writing and then using the mark schemes and the skills descriptors in the criteria, I'm going to get you to self assess yourself. Uh, so please do try and keep a track of uh, how well you've been doing and where you think you are throughout the lesson. So a couple of tips, it's best to have a pen and I'd like to get some lined paper if you can. Uh, and then obviously remember that as we go through this particular session, you're able to pause the uh, screen as often as you like to take notes, but obviously there will be some key points uh, and on particular slides I'll be asking you to pause so that you can actually write your own responses. So in terms of the first focus, we're going to look at the assessment objective six descriptors. And for this particular lesson, we are focusing on around about a level three and improving uh, level three responses through level four into level five. So the idea is that we, we want to see in your responses a varied use of vocabulary for a level three uh, seven to nine mark response. And so we're going to look today at how we use things like adverbs uh, and subordinate clauses and how we uh, extend using adjectives and description. Uh, we obviously want you to uh, keep a focus on spelling words correctly. Uh, today, if you've got a dictionary to hand or if you've got, uh, you know, obviously the computer, uh, but if you've got something you can just check some spellings and more ambitious words and make sure they're spelled correctly. That's one of the key focuses. And then finally, for bullet point two, we're looking at accurately using punctuation, but also varying the type of punctuation that we use and adapting this for our audience and purpose. So we'll come back to the mark scheme as we go through the lesson, but that's the starting point for most of us today. So the flower box is the skill that we're focusing on, and it really looks at taking a simple sentence like the girl walked along the street and through a series of processes, creating and turning it into something that is more complex that uses a semicolon and multiple clauses. Slipping quickly past the puddles, the young girl skipped excitedly as she made her way home. It was her birthday and she was having a party. Now, you know, in any piece of writing, I might use both of these uh, particular sentences, but the, the thought process today is about how we can start with a simple sentence and step by step go through a process to make it something that is obviously more complex and has more detail in it. So the analogy is this idea of the flower box. Uh, if we start with a simple sentence, that's our basic structure to our uh, response and then adding to that simple sentence, you know, dirt and other flowers, other words, other phrases, we're going to make it more colourful and we're going to hopefully make it more engaging and more uh, detailed for our examiners. So first question I've got for you, which is what is a simple sentence? So I'd like to think about what types of words, what makes up a simple sentence uh, and what makes it different to a compound or complex sentence. So just have a little bit of reflection about that. 
In terms of our key focus, uh, a simple sentence is a sentence that has a subject, a verb and an object. So you can see the subject and the object are both nouns, but it must have those three things in it if it is to be a simple sentence. Uh, in terms of an example, I've got Peter walked to the shop. So Peter, that's my first important noun. That's the subject. Walked is obviously the verb. And then shops, that's where it's going. That's the other noun in the sentence. That's the object. So this stands alone as a simple sentence. Uh, and lots of people call it a main clause. So in terms of you, what I'd like you to do now is to write down that sentence on the board at the top of your piece of paper. The man walked down the road. Be aware that we are going to be crossing things through. We are going to be adding different words and phrases into this particular sentence. So you might want to give yourself a little bit of space as you write it down just so that you can annotate around it. Uh, and, and also be aware that um, you are going to be given the opportunity to come up with your own sentences a little bit later on. So uh, use this process and try and be quite clear in the way that you're going through the process so that you can come back to it um, as we do the other task towards the end of the lesson. So the first thing to do then is to identify the subject, verb and object in that sentence. So you've got man is the subject, verb is walked and object is road, if you can just underline those. Um, we're going to aim to use that simple sentence as a starting point uh, and develop it through a process so that it is more sophisticated and it is a complex sentence. So I'm going to look initially at the verb walked and I want to change that verb. Walked is over the used, it's used a lot in, in terms of our writing. So we want to think about ranging the verb and, and hopefully thinking about vocabulary choices and making it a little bit more engaging. So I've gone for the word paste. You don't have to, you can choose your own, but if you want to use that, that's fine. The man paced down the road. You can see the way I've given it a little bit more energy. I've started to give it a little bit more description simply by changing that verb to paste. Next thing I'm going to do is look at adjectives to describe the nouns. So I've got two nouns in the sentence, man and road, and I now want to include two adjectives into that sentence to make it a little bit more flowery. And obviously you can see down the bottom there, I've got the bluebells in the middle. That was when I changed the verb. And then I've got these two daisies either side of the bluebells, one for the uh, noun man and one for the noun road. So the sentence now reads, the old man paced down the eerie road and it's starting to become more colourful. Next focus is on the verb again. So I'm looking to describe that verb with an adverb. So if you look at the example at the top of the board, the old man paced purposely down the Erie Road. You can see the way that by using an adverb, I am even more you know, uh, focus on the verb and the description of how the man is actually walking. So this particular flower I like to call the rose. Um, I've been able to find a great picture of a rose, but there you go. Uh, and I do want to think about the adverb a little bit more than I do some of the other word choices that I've got. So one of the things I'm going to think, think about is where I might want to move that adverb in the sentence. So I try it at the front of the sentence. Here it is, purposefully the old man paced down the Erie Road. And I quite like using adverbs at the front of sentences because it often uh, engages me a little bit more with what's actually happening in the sentence. So I'm going to leave it there for now. The next focus is uh, on this particular exotic flower of Venus flytrap, and you can just see it there on the bottom right. Um, so this is a phrase instead of just a word, and it's called a subordinate clause. So a subordinate clause is part of the sentence that won't make sense on its own. So if you look at the example, purposefully the old man paced down the eerie road, cautious of the shadows. You can see the way that the subordinate clause works to focus on the setting, the environment that the particular character is in. But if I were just to write down cautious of the shadows and put full stop at the end of it, uh, you can see the way it's an incomplete sentence. It doesn't make sense on its own. So it must always be connected to the main clause of a sentence. Um, if you look down at the base of the Venus flytrap on the screen there, you're going to see that there are a couple of shovels, a couple of spades there. And that's to remind myself that I must use punctuation around the subordinate clause uh, so that I, I'm, I'm telling the examiners that I understand that this is a multi-clausal sentence. So um, the way it works is purposely, comma, the old man paced down the Erie Road, comma, cautious of the shadows full stop. And I've broken it up nice and evenly, nice and accurately so the examiners can see what's going on. 
So the next thing to do with the subordinate clause is to consider whether or not I want to move it in the sentence, just like I was doing with the adverb. Um, they are the more exotic flowers in the sentence, so the, you know, I need to think about balancing them across the actual uh, flower box. But ultimately, I could move it to the middle. So if I were to move the subordinate clause to the middle, it becomes an embedded subordinate clause, so purposefully the old man cautious of the shadows, Pace down the Erie Road. I do quite like uh, embedded subordinate clauses. And once again, they do focus on you know, developing that relationship with the reader and sharing additional information. But the final place I might want to think about it is actually at the front of the sentence. And this is where I prefer to actually use subordinate clauses. That's just me, that's my opinion. But you can see in putting it at the front of the sentence, I've actually moved the adverb closer to the verb. So if you look at the flowers, where the rose was at the beginning of the, the flower bed, it's actually moved the other side of the verb now. And that was going back to that idea of just balancing the description uh, and using exotic flowers across the whole flower bed rather than just grouping them together. So the sentence reads, cautious of the shadows, the old man paced purposefully down the eerie road. And I quite like that. And now I want to think about from the sentences that I've tried so far, which one I do think is the most effective. Finally, I add in a semicolon. So if we look at the example at the top of the board, cautious of the shadows, the old man paced purposefully down the Erie Road, semicolon, he had to raise the alarm. Now, there are some rules about using a semicolon that show the examiners that I'm actually becoming a little bit more developed and sophisticated in my understanding of grammar. So the key rule about using this type of semicolon is that it must have a subject, verb and object before it, and then it must have a subject, verb and object after it. So if you look back at the example at the top, I've highlighted those words. I've got the subject man, the verb paste and the object road. So SVO is before it and then I've got he the subject raise is the verb and alarm is the object and that's after the semicolon so you can see the way that just by checking that grammatical rule subject verb object before the semicolon subject verb object after the semicolon I'm accurate in the way that I'm using it and effectively what's happened if you look down the bottom of the page is I'm coupling connecting two flower boxes together so two main clauses are now grouped together and I can start to extend and develop my paragraph in that way so Finally, um, as we move into the last little sequence of the lesson, this is now your turn. So most of the tasks that we're going to do now are about you putting these skills into practice. So choose one of the sentences on the board, either the girl jumped over the fence or the boy looked across the street. I've included the flower box reflection there for you to just go through in terms of the process to uh, make that simple sentence into something a bit more complex. So if you'd like to press pause now and just run through that, take a simple sentence and make it into a complex sentence. Finally, uh, as we move on to the extension task, I'd like you to think about creating your own simple sentence. So without using the uh, flower box reflection, the, you know, the guide of five steps that we go through, take your own simple sentence, think about going through the flower box process uh, and then turn it into a more complex sentence. And then ultimately what I'd like you to do is look back at the simple one that you started with, compare it with a more complex sentence and just make a little bit of a decision about which one you prefer and why that is. So if you'd like to press pause again and do that. And then this last uh, focus in the lesson is now taking us back to the exam paper. So often in the exam papers uh, for question five, you're given a choice of two tasks. One will always be connected to an image or picture. And the exam board has decided to include the images as a stimulus for students to help you come up with ideas for a piece of creative writing. So we're going to focus on that particular skill today. So here's your picture. It's a shack in the woods. First thing I'd like you to do while looking at the picture is just take some notes about your initial feelings, uh, initial uh, descriptive ideas that you can come up with. So obviously it's quite a dark image, but we've got the mist in the background. Uh, but do think about what you can see, hear, touch, taste and smell. You know, focusing on a range of sentences as with a range of punctuation does keep our uh, examiners and our readers engaged more in what we are actually writing about. You know, think about the season. I've said it might be autumn because of leaves are on the ground. 
uh, and also think about whether or not anybody's actually around is it you on your own you know what's the purpose of the characters actually being in this setting so if you want to press pause now just spend a little bit of time coming up with some notes coming up with some descriptive ideas for this particular piece of writing And now it's time to actually have a go. So I've got the picture of the shack. I've got two options uh, of sentences that you might want to think about starting with. Uh, you could take the, the top one there, the boy approached the shack and use that flower box idea and actually extend that sentence, making it more complex. But it's up to you. Uh, you can use those or you, or you can actually use your own. But press pause in a moment and then spend about 15 minutes trying to write between two and three paragraphs. OK, press pause. So just before we actually get you to look at your own piece of work, uh, I've got a model on the board uh, and I'm just going to read to you the first bit of the sentence. I really tried to think about using that flower box idea for my opening sentence. So there it is with the adverb. Gradually, he moved through the misty darkness of the forest, semicolon. It had been days since he had seen anyone and he was desperately seeking shelter. So it works quite effectively in terms of a complex sentence. And I'm obviously using a little bit of uh, alliteration and sibilance to engage my reader as well. But I am also thinking about, you know, arranging my vocabulary. But I'm really trying to be as sophisticated as I can in the way that I use language. So I've tried to annotate this particular model uh, as you read through it with the ideas that I was trying to show the examiners that I'm you know, confident with, feel secure with. Uh, so do this now on your own piece of writing. If you just press pause, spend a little bit of time just going around the outside of your own piece of writing and then uh, you know, focusing on what you have actually done well, what you've included, uh, and obviously you'll, you'll know more about the uh, use of devices like alliteration or similes because you wrote it so just make sure that you spend a little bit of time to annotate around the outside of your response uh, what you've done well so press pause now we're going to look at the skills descriptors and, and see how that actually works so for the the model that i did on the previous slide i think that's probably a level four um, it did have a wider, more developed range of uh, vocabulary. Uh, and certainly there were uh, you know, full stops, commas, semicolons, and the use of dashes. So there was quite a range of punctuation in those two uh, paragraphs that I think you could say were used for deliberate effect. So I think this uh, marks wise is probably towards the, the lower end of the level four, maybe 10 marks. Uh, and I'd certainly want to think about using some exclamation marks, question marks, perhaps possibly even using some speech uh, in the next few paragraphs to develop my response. But I think at the moment, level four, around about a mark of 10 for those particular reasons is where I would put myself. So now get hold of your response, have a little look at the mark scheme criteria and start to think to yourself, OK, whereabouts do I see myself as a level? Is it quite basic? Am I using full stops and commas? Have I moved into using exclamation marks, commas? Uh, am I using uh, question marks or, or any of the sort of medium term uh, um, punctuation that I can uh, access? Have I started to use semicolons? That would be for level three. Uh, and certainly if I'm using uh, punctuation in a deliberate way, I can start to move into a level four. And then when I can start to see sophisticated use of punctuation, that would certainly be moving to level five. So spend a little time actually reading through your response again, uh, looking at the annotation you made, focusing particularly on the way that you structured sentences and making sure there's a range of sentences. And think about what level you think that your piece of work might be in. And then obviously really try and think about what mark you give it. Is it you know, in the middle of that level? Um, is it a little bit weaker than that? It might need a little bit more support. Or certainly is it towards the top end of the response where you might want to be looking at the next skills criteria so that you can focus on moving up into that. So I'd like you to just record what uh, level you think you are, what mark you think you would have got in that level, and then just write down what you actually did in your response uh, that fits the mark scheme criteria. The last little bit of focus for us today is on the home learning. So I've got three paragraphs that I've written for you, uh, which were based on this uh, picture that we've looked at today. And then just around the outside of that particular model, I've got some questions that I hope will guide your reflection on how we're now starting to try and write uh, to really think about you know, positioning our reader and manipulating their interest and engagement with the text. So uh, answer the questions around the outside of the model. And then look back at the mark scheme criteria for assessment objective six and start to give me some even better if comments. Give me some targets in terms 
terms of what you think I could do next to make this response even better. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for your time today. And once again, uh, if you can continue to submit work, hopefully via Microsoft Teams, uh, but do get in touch with us uh, should you need any more guidance. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.